Oh, welcome to Prepper Talk Radio here on K Talk AM 1640. We are live from the Rocky Mountains here in Utah, and I uh, want to first off say thank you to our sponsors for keeping us on the air and keeping you in the know. So thanks for listening to us, listeners, and hope you guys have an enjoyable listenership today, <laughs> listening ship experience, <laughs> listening to Prepper Talk Radio. I'm Scott, yes. and Shane's here in the house as usual, and uh, we are stoked to be here. Um, getting a little feedback, so I turned off that other mic. Perfect. Now, what are we, what we're talking about today... Um, it's summertime, and the living is not easy, right? Summertime, I guess. I guess uh, and the living is not easy. It depends on where you're at. But. Well, I, I think in our society today, we need to be a little bit more um, conscious. cautious, conscious, mm-hmm. and constantly observing. Yeah, we think summer's the good time, right? We're out of the winter. Winter's a hard time. Not well, always I mean, the case. Summer, everyone starts stripping down layers, yep. you know. Leave everything the, at home, run right? Running to the beach, running to the mountains. You don't need much. You don't, you don't need a jacket. Need you don't need many supplies, you, so you think. I've, I've always got a bag in my car. Oh, yeah. So yeah. today, we're going to talk about safety. Summer safety. Uh, we're going to talk about women's safety. We're going to talk about kids' safety. So each segment is going to go a little different direction. But uh, we've got an amazing guest coming on second segment, John Bunnell from Safer Solutions. And that's S A F. H E R Solutions. Mm, um, we'll give that that know. link while we've got them on the phone, and then you can also see it if you go to our Facebook page, Prepper Talk Radio on Facebook, of course. And in the third segment, we've got uh, SafeKids.Utah.org. We've got a we've got Cambry, who's the director over there. She's going to be joining us, and we're going to be talking about some safety things to help keep your kids safer now and post apocalypse. Right? We always want to keep our family safe, but even more so then. But definitely now because there's so much going on, and, and everyone kind of is like. That dog out of up squirrel, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. always on to the next Very thing, distracted. especially kids. So, yeah, and, and I think uh, you know, kind of what I was alluding to is that okay, it's summer, everything is good, right? Good times, good mm-hmm. vibrations, and we don't think about the inherent risks that that the heat brings. You know, w- yep. winter maybe is a little bit more apparent, right? Oh, it's cold, I got to stay bundled up. I, you know, there's certain things you need to do. I think in summer, the the attitude tends to be. Less is, is more, right? Mm-hmm. Where you got the flip flops, you got the shorts. You, uh, you're you're carrying less with you because you want to feel free and and uh, not burned down. And I wouldn't and say I'm carrying less, though. Well, I'm, I know you and I we're, we're I maybe, it exceptions, I'm but I think you pointed I'm, at me and said you. Well, and I'm I like you little a hole. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking generally <laughs> in a lot of people. You know, it, and I I get it. You know, take the watch off, take the, take the rings off. You know, wear the t-shirt and enjoy the heat and and you know don't worry and don't worry. You know. Right. But well, summer is a time definitely to not drop your guard. Well, I think the other part of it is, is what are your skill sets as you go through the summer? Um, because if you're, if you're taking the time during the summer, which most of us do, to go camping, to go have some fun outdoors, mm-hmm. um, that's a perfect opportunity time or perfect opportune time to hone some skills, to increase your knowledge so that you don't have to carry as much if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the whole purpose yeah, behind no, those skill buildings. Yep. But really when it comes down to it, okay, we're going on trips. We're doing this. We're doing that. You know, heat is a killer. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to live in Arizona, and holy crap, yep. there would be stories all the time of so-and-so having heat stroke and how dangerous that is. Or, you know, someone died in their apartment, and by the time they found the body, mm-hmm. I won't go any further. It was yep. disgusting. Um, but there's there's always those types of stories. And so, okay, how do we stay cool? Well, I know that right now there are heat warnings yep. from St. George, Las Vegas, down in that area, which I'm headed there on Sunday. So this <laughs> kind of <laughs> came to my mind like, okay, there's a heat warning, and I'm going right into it. Uh, so, of course, what comes to my mind is, okay, what do I need to do to make sure I'm prepared in case I have vehicle breaks down or whatever might happen? So that was on my mind in, in, in picking this topic today, in, in picking s- the he- summer the, the, yeah. summer, safety. summer safety. Well, okay, so let's let's talk about things you should always have in your car when mm-hmm. you're traveling in the summer. Number one, water. Yep. So yeah, what I added to my vehicle for a long trip, I added a couple of gallons of water. Okay. And it stays there all summer long. Yep. In addition to the water I have on my roof for my vehicle. What I like to do is I like to have a couple blankets. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. your uh, Mylar blankets. Those are always in the car, but actual wool blankets. blankets. Mm-hmm. Either, whether they're wool or cotton, can, mm-hmm. um, because they're tr- I'm using them to cool. Okay. Um, so cotton's and, better for that. And so here's, here's why I want those. Something that's very breathable. Something that I can get wet. Because if I get it wet and I put it on me, it'll evaporate the heat off Mm -hmm. me and cool you down, right? So I can keep my core temperature colder. Mm -hmm. I can also hang it over the windows if the windows are down and we need to pull over to the side of the road. You get a breeze through it. 
But best of all is I put that on top of my water, and my water doesn't get so hot. Mm-hmm. That's a good. So yeah, if I'm drinking the water, I'm not scalding my mouth. And that's no fun. But, you know, it's good to have the water whether it's warm or not. Absolutely. But absolutely. And I think that's one thing that, you know, I think about uh, uh, a lot as well is, okay, how do I keep my house cool in the summer? It's maybe easier to uh, know what to do in winter. Okay, I know how to keep my house if Mm -hmm. I have a wood-burning stove and so forth. But how do you keep your house cool in the summer as well? And one of those those ideas is you have a sheet, you have a, a, a cotton blanket that you get wet, put over in front of your doors, open your doors or windows. Doors and windows. And use that as kind of a uh, kind of a swamp cooler. Our kind of good a, friends from the south, mm-hmm. you know, down in Georgia, you go back in your history, that's that's what they did, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? That's how they kept the homes cool. Um, and we also have the little hand fans, right? Mm-hmm. You can also have the circular fans in every room. You know, there's, there's different ways and different things you can do. But, man, with no power, no electricity, if that all goes out, mm-hmm. cooling mm-hmm. your home or cooling where you're staying gets to be a little bit tricky especially if you're in these you know s- southern utah arizona where it gets really hot southern well, california one Nevada. thing I, one reason i really like northern utah you know all summer long except for maybe a few days maybe a week it cools down at night and it's refreshing and you get a fresh start and then you get back in the heat the next day uh, but there are a few days when it's just you know kind of hot all night long and you just <laughs> don't, don't like sleep that. well yeah i don't like that's that so that. hot that's why i love to have a basement oh and that's the other thing. If mm-hmm. you've got a basement, that's the coolest point in your house. Just go it down, stays cooler. Just go downstairs. Or if you've got an access to a cave, mm-hmm. those stay cool year round. That's actually one of the nice things about caves. They can say yes, they stay at a consistent, consistent temperature year mm-hmm. round. So if you can find your bug out location, if you have a cave that you can go to, all the better. Boom. Heck yeah. Already built, just have to get some light in there. So what are some other things that you put in your car for these trips for safety and yeah, for travel? Here's one thing, you know, I always consider whenever I go a long distance, I always consider okay, maybe if something extreme goes wrong, I may have to walk home. Okay. So if I'm down southern Utah and it's 110 degrees, I'm not wa- wanting to walk in that. I'm going to be walking at night. Or I also ha- stash a large umbrella in my rig, not just for rain, but for shade from the sun. Good idea. So whether I, if I have to work in my vehicle or whatever it might be or, or I have to walk in the sun, I've got some shade in addition to a good hat. Because I think a you know, hat is also essential Keep keeping the sun yep. off of your head to keep your, keep your brain cool. The larger the brim, the better. Like not yes. just a ball cap. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Um, another one that I like is tinfoil. Tinfoil. Okay. Explain. Now, let me explain this. So there's, there's, a three, there's, there's multiple parts to this. Tinfoil, a, a bunch of gallon Ziploc bags. Mm-hmm. One for at least every person in the car. And a camera. Um, hopefully, if you've got the internet access where you're going, this is, this, here's, here's where I'm going with this. Is this is something I learned from uh, uh, about three years ago from Search and Rescue. Um, when you go hiking, maybe it's just a day hike, whatever, doesn't matter. But when you go hiking, when you go on a road trip, when you go places, take a picture of everybody and what they're wearing when okay. you leave. Mm-hmm. Send it to a friend. Say, hey, we'll see you later. We're going. Um, or post it online, hey, we're taking off, right? But be mm-hmm. cautious with that because other people right, will right. be like, oh, you're leaving your house. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's always best to send it to a friend. Um, and then when you do go hiking, when you're ready to leave the car, when you're ready to go walking or do something else, take off an art of article of clothing you've been wearing for the last you know, three mm-hmm. to five hours, uh-huh. put it in the gallon bag, and put a new article on. Um, and the reason is is for search for, dogs for they can smell that yep. and track you and then take some tinfoil out and step on the tinfoil. Each person steps on the tinfoil oh, for your and you put that inside your bag <laughs> and you put your name on the bag with a Sharpie. And so then if someone does go missing, you know what types of tracks to follow. Mm-hmm. You know what smell to track. Um, and you also people know because of what you've sent them via text where you are and where you're going. And also include when you're going to be back. Those are all smart. And I thought, man, that's brilliant. And... I need to improve on that because I've got tinfoil, but I haven't put it in the car. But I've got all the other stuff in the car, and I'm like, time to get the tinfoil because my kid walks. And, and I uh, suppose or that the heavy-duty foil would probably work best. I would imagine that as well. Yeah. But, I mean, you just throw a roll of tinfoil in your car. You know, everybody can just step on it real quick. That's a good idea. Put it in their little bags. You're good to go. I like that. I thought, man, that is really smart. Yeah, I had not heard that one before. That's a good one. So in addition to that, you know, we've got water, we've got blankets, we've got those safety measures. But, I, man, lighters, flashlights, I mean, there's so many other things we mm-hmm. could really get in depth on. Um, but it comes down to the, the, the minimal necessities, um, backup communications, maps. Maps are my favorite. Mm-hmm. They'll always be my favorite. Um, you can get maps really, really cheaply. If your phone ever goes out and you can't recharge it and you're using that as your GPS, how screwed are you if you don't know where you're going and how to get there? 
And I, I think the one of the main things I wanted to bring up before our, our break here is that uh, safety, you know, speaking in general more about safety and not mm-hmm. just summer safety in particular, but safety, um, and I, 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 I love Mike's Ro- Mike Rowe's take on this. Sa- okay. Safety is third. Safety is not first. Saf- safety is third. And basically that's to get you out of the rut of, of, of thinking that someone else is responsible for your safety. Only you are responsible for your own for your own safety, uh, whether it be uh, you're walking across the crosswalk and you have to look in both ways, or you're just looking at the sign saying, "Okay, you're safe to walk now." Right? Oh my gosh, I actually just experienced that last week. Mm-hmm. People will, they'll find a crosswalk and mm-hmm. they'll just start walking, and the lights haven't changed. There's no notica- notification. It's a crosswalk, and their head is pointing at their phone, and they're not looking. Mm. Um, the other problem is drivers aren't paying attention, even if the yep. lights are flashing and you're crossing your crosswalk, a lot of times those drivers aren't paying attention to what's going on. And so then you've got that problem. Now, other people should be looking out for you, and you should be looking out for others as well. However, you should not rely on that, especially when walking across the street, when the crosswalk says you can walk. Uh, I think that's a big point where that nobody else is responsible for our safety but ourselves. Absolutely. So, And I, I think we oftentimes, especially with listening to, you know, the American Red Cross and our government and and uh, FEMA, oh, we're going to come take mm-hmm. care of you, right? Yeah. But there's also, FEMA's also saying, hey, make sure you take care of yourself first, get a 96-hour kit. You know, they're finally catching on that, hey, we can't get there very fast, so you need at least 96 mm-hmm. hours, right? Well, think about when you're on, on a plane, right? First thing they say, okay, if something happens, the mask's going to drop down, you get the mask on yourself first before you can help yep. someone else. But also, just as preppers and preparedness-minded individuals, we deal with kind of dangerous stuff. We like to go in the mountains. That can be dangerous. We like guns. We like knives. We like, I mean, even driving down the street yep. is dangerous. And if we don't acknowledge that, then we're going to find ourselves uh, in a dangerous or unsafe situation. Absolutely, and I think we oftentimes forget to pack a first aid kit that will mm-hmm. withstand where we're going. But that's ex- that's made for or designed for or equipped for the activity that we're doing at the time. So I've got at least two first aid kits in my car at all time, all right? And then I've got my bag. Your, your boo-boo kit and your trauma kit, right? Is that what you're mm. referring to? Yeah, kind of the bumps and bruises. Yeah, I guess mm-hmm. that would be the boo-boo kit. The, boo-boo, the, um, and then I've got a, and such. a larger substantial trauma kit mm-hmm. um, so that I can take care of things until we can get help, right? In case we're 45 minutes to an hour away from a hospital, we can do the minor things we can do to help preserve life and and hopefully get them to where they need to be. Um, the other part is is there's a lot of things that you can pull into a first aid kit that you can use to protect you from a lot of those injuries or save you from an $800 ER visit or depending on what your copay is or mm-hmm. if you have insurance or no, you know, it can get really expensive. You know, minimum costs for an ambulance ride is $1,000. Minimum cost for a lift ride I've seen is about three dollars, right? So call a lift mm. driver first. Mm-hmm. You know, if if, yeah, if you've got the options, yeah, if right. <laughs> There's so many things you could do if we take the time to think about it and plan ahead. Um, we're going to be safer. We're going to be better protected throughout. And so I think that's the key. I think that's one of the things we miss a lot is is planning ahead, pre planning. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where the word prepping came from, well, is that, you're preparing. Yeah, and that can be scary, too, because I'm, I'm going to plan for worst case here. What, and then you have to think about those things of what that what might possibly entail. Absolutely. Well, there's our music. There's our segment. When we get back after the break, we're going to be talking to John Bunnell with Safe Her Solutions. That's S-A-F-H-E-R Solutions. Check them out on Facebook. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio here at K Talk. Listen to live on the air here at 1640 AM. You can also stream us live at ktalkmedia.com. I'm Scott. This is Shane, and we are Radio for the Ready Minded. And uh, don't forget to check us out on Facebook. We love to interact with them there. And uh, That's probably where we're the most active. Yes. I don't know why. It's just, <laughs> just kind of how it's become. Yes. But uh, join us there, you know, cue in on the conversation now this next segment we've got where we've been talking about safety car safety summer safety now let's talk about women's safety we've actually got a guest on the phone john bunnell john are you there i am sir fantastic now john is a former u.s marine and uh if i remember 25 years in the police force uh 24 sir 24 i'm rounding up i'm rounding up who's counting who's counting that's right well, now you've you've been doing a lot of public speaking, and you've been doing a lot of um, women's safety things, and and you've kind of launched your own webinar to help with that. Um, so let's let's kind of talk first. Why did you do that? What's the inspiration behind it? Why did you feel like there's a need to do this? 
And then let's talk about some stats because I know you've got some interesting numbers for us that will help us be more aware of what's going on. I do. Thanks for asking. So 25 years in law enforcement, the military, I did several years uh, working security in the private sector. And uh, I worked for the Los Angeles Police Department, and I saw a lot of bad things, a lot of negative things. And that tends to stay with you when you see that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And when you see that kind of thing, it changes who you are and how you do things. And Mm -hmm. all of the culmination of my experience, I saw a lot of victimology toward women. There was a lot of women being victimized, and obviously there are men victims, and there are are women aggressors. I get that. But by and large, the majority of victims are women. Mm -hmm. And I saw them um, feeling a lack of confidence, feeling vulnerable, sensing that need for help, And I wanted to utilize my background, my training, my experience to help them be safer after I retired. I retired about a year, about a year ago and decided to launch this women's safety venture to help women improve their personal safety. Fantastic. And I noticed that like not just women, but everybody seems to be face down on their cell phones and the technology, Mm -hmm. even walk around town. I mean, that that makes you an even easier target. Um, because you're not aware of what's going on around you. Um, that's and, correct, and that's. Not, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I apologize. Oh you're no, you're good. But but I was. My point was is, you know, we see the videos online and we all laugh at them. Oh, so and so fell in a pothole, or oh, so and so tripped and and, or so and so hit a sign, street sign with their face. You know, we're like, haha, that's funny. But the reality is, that's what the criminals are looking for. The undesirable um, people who are trying to inflict harm, and they're looking for people who aren't paying attention. Is that right? And that's absolutely right, and that's one of the main things that I delve deep into in my webinars and my workshops. Uh, my message of women's safety, most people think, and they hear women's safety, they think, oh, that's for a woman. Well, my message is for all women, but it's also for anybody that cares about a woman, and, and maybe even more so them, because we're talking about men caring for their wives, girlfriends, mothers, daughters, sisters, uh, cousins, nieces, whatever. Uh, Everyone's got a woman that they care about. And uh, I hate to say this because it sounds bad, but many women, in my experience, and I've had a lot of it, many women don't put enough emphasis on their safety. Now, before I get a lot of hate mail, I'm not saying that women don't care about it. I'm not saying they don't think it's important. I'm not saying they don't want to be safe. What I'm saying is they don't put enough emphasis on it Mm -hmm. because most women have not been victimized. And the mental thought is, well, I'm good. Nothing's Mm -hmm. ever happened to me. I'm fine. I'm I'm safe. And and, I think think a lot of the women I know in in my family in particular, I have have four daughters and then my wife, uh, they are counting on dad and and the husband to do that, take that role. Instead of and and so they then become uh, complacent. Yeah. Well, and and culturally we teach, you know, at least where I grew up. I grew up in Colorado, and culturally out there, like my dad grew up where if you're on a date, your date's responsible to protect you. Well, sometimes the date is the aggressor. Sometimes the mm-hmm. date's mm-hmm. the dangerous person. Exactly. Um, but exactly. being able to be aware of that and being able to sniff that out, but also, you know, when you're my sister when she was working um, at a corporate office type situation she'd work late sometimes and she'd have to go through a dark parking garage didn't have enough lights and so it was like okay what do you do and so my dad would drive out sometimes and and walk her to her car um and he got in the face of the uh the owners there and was like you need to put better lighting here because this isn't very safe and he's just like we need to fix this and so they did thankfully um and i've heard all kinds of stories like that I, i remember when i worked in california um if i was working late or there was ladies working late in the office I would stay until they all left, and I would. It would be my job to walk them to their cars to make sure they're safe. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But we'd have different people that volunteer different different nights mm-hmm. of the week to stay until everyone left, so that we'd have that safety. And we were in a quote unquote safe, safe. Yeah. business complex community. But you never know. You never know, you know. And one of the things I heard you guys talking before the break about taking care of yourself—it's your responsibility. And mm-hmm. a lot of women feel like, you know, it's men's issue because it's it's really not a woman's. Uh, fault if they become victimized, right. and they mm-hmm. shouldn't have to do mm-hmm. more to protect themselves. 
but the fact is they do because it's the men that choose to behave badly. Now, it would be nice if, and not all men, obviously, just the ones that behave badly we're talking about, but right. but it, it, it would be nice if we could change men's bad behavior, and that might be possible on an individual basis, but for the masses, it's not. And I think just and so women, nowadays, and it's reality that uh, yeah, times have changed. They're different than what they used to be, and we have to adapt for that. Yeah, and women have to take a more active role in controlling the things that they have control over to help them be safe. And that can be, in, in my experience, in my opinion, broadly speaking, it can be broken down into three areas. One is self-defense, one is weapons, and one is what I focus on, mental conditioning. And I talk about each one of those in, in depth, but that's the areas that I see it in. Well, let's let's talk about the mental conditioning then. Let's kind of expound on that. So, because you offer a course specifically catered to that and, and awareness, um, but how? I mean, how do, especially for our listeners, how do we condition ourselves to be better alert? Um, what are what are some of the points or, or, I guess, key takeaways that you you will provide? Thanks for asking. So, so there's actually. Um, when I give this, I've got, I've got a, like a, a workshop, and I also, as I said, you, you mentioned that I speak publicly, and by the way, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, so there's like five main bullet points. I give women, when I speak, a, a general intro- introduction into their personal safety, talking about those three main topics and mm-hmm. in depth the pros and cons of each so that they understand them better. And then things like having the proper attitude having the proper mindset, which is completely different than attitude, having um, um, uh, situational awareness and uh, minimizing opportunity that you make yourself available to be victimized. Those are the main key points um, uh, about helping women be more aware. But attitude, as I said, is a big part of it, and that's, and that's believing that there's an issue with me being, as a woman, being victimized. And that's where I get into these stats about about bringing awareness, not just awareness, but, but the acknowledgement that being sexually assaulted as a woman is a real problem, mm-hmm. and, and the lack of reporting it, because almost none of the sexual assaults that occur in the United States get reported. And the more women are aware of how big of an issue it is and how important it is to report it, that will hopefully drive towards minimizing it happening in the future and uh, one of my stats is 99% of these perpetrators that commit rape and sexual assault walk free and wow. get some well, of these really guys behind that high, bars. 99%. It, it's crazy, yeah. Wow. Is it because they're just not reported or the the victim doesn't want to go to court or how do they walk I free? Think it's both, I think it's both, sir, but a majority is the women don't want to report it. And, and, and as I said, I don't want to totally um, get ahead of myself. You guys were talking about the stats before, but but the number of actual sexual assaults and rapes is like quintuple the number that are reported. So it's a fraction of the number wow. that are reported. So, yeah. You know, there's something we talk about regularly here on the show. It is the the mama bear uh, kind of attitude or mindset. Um, and uh, we see that when uh, – so the women aren't necessarily uh, helpless, as I think a lot of – or maybe portrayed to be right when when something happens, man, that mama bear instinct turns on and they are fierce. Is that That's, something you yeah. try to engender? I mean, how does that kind of fit in? Because we talk about that a lot. Yeah, I do. Um, but that's that's kind of the worst case scenario. So right, yes. Uh, I, I've already I've already um, touched on my background. I, I taught self defense full time for the Los Angeles Police Department for thirteen years. So I've got and I carry weapons with me. I carry a gun everywhere I go, a knife everywhere I go. It's just part of my who, who I am and what I do. Mm-hmm. Conceal. That's just me. So I'm a big proponent of both self-defense and weapons. However, um, I had to say that because it'll sound like I'm knocking them. There are cons with both as far as women are concerned. And generally speaking, for the, for the, for the larger population of women that may not have been exposed to these things, self-defense or weapons, before, you're talking about carrying weapons, whether it's a knife or uh, forget guns just for a second. You can include mm-hmm. guns if you want. Uh, it could be pepper spray. It could be a taser. It could be a coubaton. It could be your keys. Women, There are women out there that buy these things and put them in the purse, and it is nothing more than a false sense of security because they don't practice mm-hmm. how to use these weapons. And if you don't practice, 
It's just a false sense of security, and it could easily be taken from you and used against you. So without getting deep into it, that's one fault that they need to be aware of. It takes a long time to become really proficient. And let's say, as an example, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but you're carrying, let's say, pepper spray. Right. If it's in your purse and a guy comes up behind you and grabs you and bear hugs you, your arms are at your sides. You will not be able to reach into your purse, retrieve it, turn it towards them, and spray it. It's not going to happen. So that's the false sense of security. Um, and I could go down each weapon, and I won't. Uh, and the thing with self-defense, I'm a huge proponent of self-defense. It has its time and its place. But self-defense is reactive. Mm-hmm. It's what to do once you get attacked. Once the person puts hands on and either grabs you, tackles you to the ground, they're laying on top of you, what do you do? You use self-defense to get away. So even if you're able to break free and get away and you, and you prevented being raped, you still have to live with the trauma mm-hmm. of having yep. been attacked for the rest of your life. So, so, so you're, what you're getting to is basically it's best to avoid the situation, have the situational awareness, rather to avoid those situations rather than uh, be prepared to deal with them. Or, exactly, and but it's how to do that and what to look for and how to minimize the opportunity because uh, criminals are planning to make somebody a victim. And if you're, like you said earlier, buried in your cell phone or doing something else and, and they're planning – it only takes them a second, and it doesn't have to be sexual assault mm-hmm. or rape. It could be, it could be theft. Yeah. And if mm-hmm. you're not paying attention, and you got a couple of handbags from the mall in your in your arm or something, and you're walking to your car, and they come up behind you, it only takes a second if you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. So, so what what are, what are the I guess the first few things that you you tell your students in being situationally aware? Um, give give us kind of a preview of that, if you will. So I gave a little bit of the introduction, and the first one is having the right attitude. So um, you've got you've to believe that being sexually assaulted is a real possibility, and, and you have to think about that all the time. And women, most of, most of the time, are not willing to do that. And I've had women tell me, I'm in my happy place. I'm in my la-la land. I'm just in a zone. I don't think about that. That's negative. I don't want to be pessimistic. Yeah, 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 you have to be, mm-hmm. because yeah. if you don't, then you're trying to kind of live in a bubble and believe that it either doesn't exist or it's not happening or that it won't happen to me. And that's the first step in, in minimizing the risk of it happening to you is believing that it could and really believing it. So that's, that's, that's the attitude. And that's offensive, right? I mean, that's that's you, you want to stay on the offensive side, just like any, any game, any sports team. You want to stay offensive and not defensive. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about preparation. You guys talk about preparation, and I have this little saying I've, I've applied to my life for 30 years. Prior planning prevents mm-hmm. poor performance. Yep. Yeah. And you've got to do these things. And so then I talk about mindset, and mindset is really wanting to make a change in your life to minimize your risk of being a, um, a victim. Absolutely. I talk about um, changing bad or not bad, but unsafe habits. Mm-hmm. And there's thousands of them, mm-hmm. but like you said, uh, focus on your phone. That's an yeah. unsafe habit, and mm-hmm. there are dozens. But um, it could be putting the kids in the car, groceries in the car, looking for something, reading an email. Whatever you do for more than a few seconds, that is an unsafe habit, and you're, and you're leaving yourself vulnerable. And then I talk about minimizing opportunity, um, and I talk about opportunity, as I just mentioned to you before, about a criminal only needs a second, and I mm-hmm. give the illustration once I've talked about all these things in depth, and I say, look, I'm a woman. I just came out of the store. I've got hand, uh, bags in my hand, and I'm looking at my phone. And you're watching me, but I don't see you because I'm what I call H-U-A. I'm yeah. head up, you know where. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm preoccupied in doing something else, but you're planning on making me a victim, and I don't see it. Yeah. Hey, John, you know, we've, we've got about 30 seconds left, so I want to give you a, a second to wrap up, tell people where they can, where they can find you. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, I appreciate you guys' help. So there's a link to a free webinar I give that goes into this stuff in detail, and it's www.safersolutions.com, and then a forward slash be safe. It's all one word, www.safersolutions.com, forward slash be safe. And safer is spelled, as you guys said, with an H, and that'll take them to a free webinar where they can get this stuff in depth, and I appreciate your guys' time. Absolutely. Thanks so much for being on with us. You know, it's it's imperative that you, know, you guys, the listeners, take advantage of every free opportunity you have mm-hmm. to get better educated, better trained. Hopefully that's why you're listening to our show every week, because we bring on guests like John um, to give us tips, give us tricks, give us education, 
and a better mindset. So again, that's S-A-F-H-E-R solutions.com forward slash be safe. John, thank you so much for being on with us. Thank you for uh, just enlightening us of your experience um, and the things that you found. And, and guys, this was just like a super tiny sample of what you learned in the webinar. The subject, yeah. um, so guys, gals, go take some time today. Go watch that seminar. Um, I think you will be very uh, blown away mm-hmm. with how simple it is to start applying those types Begin of Begin to open your eyes to the actual the situation awareness that you need to be in. Absolutely. Well, thanks, John. We're going to we're gonna move on. Uh, our music's about to queue up. But uh, you guys are listening to Prepper Talk Radio here on K Talk, AM 1640. And we're going to be right back after a message from our sponsors. Again, John, thank thanks, you. Thanks, John. SaferSolutions.com. You. And you can find us at ktalkmedia.com. Well, welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio at K Talk AM 1640. You're listening to Scott and Shane, and this is Radio for the Ready Minded. And we've got a special guest coming on here with us. Her name is Cambry. She's with the Utah Safe Kids. Cambry, you there? Can you hear us okay? I can. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us. I know you're you're near your due date, and so you're not just busy with work, but you're also bursting at the seams, so to speak. Otherwise, um, so you could be gone any second. <laughs> Right, but uh, Hopefully thank you. Happen on there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully <laughs> we hope not. Uh, and you're not in studio, so we can't use our first aid skills, you know, oh, to help it. with delivery. But uh, um, Shane's actually been EMT trained. I would be doesn't mean foolish. I want to deliver a baby. Yeah, neither of us want to deliver a baby. But <laughs> but uh, thank you for responding to us when we at- reached out last week to see if you guys would be willing to help. It's funny. I reached out not knowing that you worked there, and you are my neighbor. Basically, you're just right. two streets over. And uh, we've known each other for a few years, so it's kind of awesome that you're like, oh, hey, and I'm all, oh, my gosh, yeah, hi. Um, So tell us, what does Safe Kids Utah do? So Safe Kids Utah is a nonprofit organization, and we work to prevent injuries in kids. That's kind of our basic mission um, throughout Utah. And so what that means, we work with preventable injuries. So we do a lot with car seat education, educating parents how to keep their kids safe in their home, how to keep them safe on the road, how to keep them, you know, safe in the different environments that they might encounter. So that's basically what we do, and it's, you know, something I love to really talk to parents and help educate them to help them know what are some of the ways that, some of the simple ways that they can really try and help protect their kids from the everyday dangers that they might encounter. Yeah, so our, our topic for day, today is safety in particular, and that's a big deal for preppers. I mean, that's something that's constantly on my mind, uh, in, regardless of the activity. Some activities are more dangerous than others. So what do you find, it, uh, maybe you know the statistics and can, can tell us all the statistics, what is the most dangerous situation that, that most kids find themselves in? Is it, is it in the home? Is it in the car? Is it at school? Uh, is it in between? Right. So when we're talking about actual deaths, um, car crashes are the number one cause of death mm-hmm. in kids. However, we know that um, kids are getting hurt all the time, right? So the home is a pretty common place for them to get hurt on the playground. Falls is the number one injury um, thing that, that the kid might happen, and that can, mm-hmm. and that can obviously happen anywhere. Um, so that's it's kind of a hard area for us to educate on because it's like, don't let your kid fall, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a thing. So, um, well, you see the kids walking along the bed, and they just step right off the side, right? Just step off the <laughs> yeah. edge. They have no sense of... Uh, That's my one-year-old. <laughs> she's like, yeah. oh, the bed ends. I'm jumping off two and a half feet later. She's <laughs> exactly. not, on the floor not standing there. anymore. She's crying. At what age not do you happy. find that that's, um, that kind of gets goes away? Um, actually, it's it stays with them Does it? You know, kind of through their early teenage years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of just clutchy for a while, you know? That's mm. just the way, well, the that, way I like and, this, but... I think there's also a thrill-seeking part of kids. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I was one of those kids. It's like, oh, I'm going to climb that tree. It's dangerous. Sweet. Yeah. Right? And so, <laughs> better. Until you hit the ground and realize, oh, like, that's oh, what that, that really means. Hurts. I shouldn't have done that. So yeah, as parents, I mean, true. falling is number one. I mean, obviously there's certain things we can do, but there's right. a lot of things we can't do. So what? Are, how can we help prevent falls um, or the more typical kinds of falls? Um, so when they're... Um, younger when they're just learning to walk and do some of those things. Obviously, some of the more common things you can do are have the safety gates um, at stairs and mm-hmm. other places so they're not going to tumble over. Um, well, you, you really have to adapt your house to your child's skill level. So um, another common area we see falls is out of windows. 
Um, mm. So designing your home so the environment is just safer all around. So not placing furniture or things that they can easily climb up to get to access to a window. Um, so I, you know, encourage parents that when they're designing or, you know, placing their furniture in their kids' bedroom to make sure that, you know, they don't have anything under the windows, so make it easier for them to climb up. Um, ha- if you want to invest in window guards, those are great. Remember that screens keep bugs out. They don't keep kids in. Mm-hmm. And that's really typically when we see the majority of falls is when the kid is leaning on the screen of an open window mm-hmm. and they fall out, not realizing that it's not going to hold them in. Um, so stairs, making sure you can prevent falls downstairs. Um, flips and trips and banging into corners. So, you know, having little um, safety devices that you can buy that you can put little on the sharp corners. Corner guards keep, and Like such. your table and things like that. That's funny. We actually were thinking of getting some of those for our, our fireplace. We had a mm-hmm. this brick fireplace yeah. in our house mm-hmm. that we bought. And the goal is, hey, we're going to renovate this eventually. Um, and... As soon as our daughter started walking, I hadn't ripped it out yet, and I was like, you not cr- in a position to go buy. It was like by. I couldn't even just – I didn't have the money at the moment to go buy corner guards. I was like – Pillows. Uh, and so the next – well, I put carpet squares up, and I was like yeah. tape, duct taping things, and that lasted about 20 minutes, and I'm like, this is stupid. What am I doing? And my wife and daughter were out, and so I just – ripped the entire fireplace, all the brick out, <laughs> and I sent a picture to my wife, and she's like – Oh my gosh, that's incredible! You're crazy. Like she was just like, "Why are you doing that? You're crazy!" I'm like, "I don't want her to knock her head on this." And, mm-hmm. and it was like perfect thing. I mean, our house is uglier now. You know it's going to happen. Though. But eventually, I'll be able to fix that. But the nice thing right. is, is she's not going to knock her head on anything other than drywall. What is now your it's yep. safer? What's your opinion on leashes for kids? Those types of harnesses with leashes, safety harnesses. Yeah, not oh leashes. My goodness. <laughs> Leashes are well, dogs. They have a leash. Safety. It's a harness, no, it's a but it has a leash. It's a safety okay. harness with anyway, a you know what I'm talking cable. About. You're just making it sound. <laughs> this is something I, nobody's ever asked me this question, and you know I'm not quite to that point with my own little boy yet, but mm-hmm. um, probably my opinion would be as to the discretion of the It parent. depends. Yes, it depends. <laughs> right. You know what? If you have a kid who is constantly getting away from you, you know what? The danger of them escaping and doing something scary is probably greater than mm-hmm. the danger of something happening while they're on safety harness. <laughs> <The> harness. <laughs> um, so, and, and obviously if you're in a crowded place or somewhere where mm-hmm. they're more likely to get away from you, that might be a, yeah. an option for some parents. I, I'm not going to say that I advocate for them necessarily, but you know what, that might be something that some parents might need to turn Well, my wife and I definitely disagree on the use of a safety harness oh, with kids. Uh, I grew up where my little brother, my mom she she created one of these. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> she was like the inventor. I was like five, like, and my mom made one of these. Just like, we have my I little brother was Mister Adventure. Mm-hmm. He was like two years old, and he's like, I'm darting out in the street. I'm darting underneath that car. Climb to the top like, of the tree. He'll, he, yeah, kid was anywhere and everywhere as fast as he could be. And my mom actually, we didn't have a fence in the backyard, and she's like, I'm, and she built this harness, and she put a carabiner on the other side, and then she connected that with a, a twenty leash. foot rope. Nope, not a leash, a 20-foot <laughs> rope, and tied the rope to the tree. So he had his full run of the backyard but couldn't get out in the street. Um, and I was just like, Winter. weird. I'm like, this is weird. But my brother stopped playing in the He's street. still alive. Stopped it showing up at our house with the, one of the neighbors holding on him saying, hey, we found him in our backyard, mm-hmm. wanted you to know where he is type of thing. Um, I, I think parents, for the most part now, are a little bit more aware of their kids' safety because we're seeing more and more safety labels and we're seeing more and more news that reports mm. of parents not paying attention. But my mom's like, if I would have just marketed that, I'd be a multimillionaire. Yes. Well, you know, we, we've been talking about distractions and, and situational awareness, and I think, you know, the perfect example for me is when my kids are at the swimming pool. My eyes are laser-focused on them at, at all moments. I've seen uh, kids, when your parents are turned back or turned to them in the pool, they're then floundering. They, they inch over into the deep part, and they're under the water within within seconds. So mm-hmm. that I think that's – I, I assume that education is a big part of, of what you do in situational – excuse me, situational awareness. Yeah, most – you know, most of the safety areas we work in is, you know, supervision does play a part, obviously. Um, and I'm glad – if you don't mind taking a minute to kind of touch on water safety. Yeah. Um, one thing I really like to educate parents on – is one, you can't rely on a lifeguard if one is available mm-hmm. wherever you're at. Yep. Um, 
two, you drowning doesn't typically look like you think it's going to look like, mm-hmm. um, or what like the movies portray. It's help! Not, help! Splashing water. Yeah, yeah. It's very the, quiet. The child is so focused on just trying to get breath that they can't yell out. They're not really splashing most of the time. They're just mm-hmm. trying to. We what we call their. It looks like they might be climbing an invisible ladder. Mm-hmm. So they're underwater. You know, yeah. their arms are kind of going up and down, and so are their legs. Yep. Um, and like you said, it happens very quickly. It can happen in, you know, a minute or less, and they're flipped under the water, and nobody notices. And we see what's happening is this happens a lot in uh, crowded areas most because mm-hmm. it's so yep. quiet and so quick. Um, and the adults are talking notice. amongst themselves and just kind of... Yep, or on their the cell phone. Yep. Yeah. So what we recommend is if you're in a group, and this can be at the pool or it can be if you're out at um, the park and there's a canal nearby or... Um, you know, even any sort of open water, we recommend that, especially when you're in a group, you have one adult that's designated as the water watcher. What all they're doing for the next 20 minutes, half an hour, is mm-hmm. watching the kids in the water. That's all they're doing. They're not playing on their phone. They're not talking to somebody else. Their sole purpose is just to supervise the kids. And, not, you know, you can play with them, interact with them. It's not like you just have to sit right, there and watch right, and them. just stare, um, like I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you take turns. So everybody still has fun. Adults still get their adult interaction that they need and crave, and um, the kids stay safe. And I think that's it's a it's a really good compromise to make sure that the outing is successful and everybody comes home alive. Yeah, and I think that's a really important part. There's we talk about planning a lot, and I think uh, most of the time when we go to the pool with other families, we kind of do our own things, and we're just like you say mm-hmm. we're just talking amongst ourselves, having fun, and no one is designated to take that. And, and I take that upon myself, honestly. I'm the one that designates myself as as the kid watcher because I'm I know the others the other ladies are talking amongst themselves and and uh and so I I am hypersensitive to that in particular in safe well safety all around right you know if you need to share that love you know just let them mm-hmm. have their turn as well <laughs> yeah no, so absolutely what are, what are some of the solutions or what are some of the uh, the things resources that we're going to find at at uh, safekidsutah.org um, on our, so one of our major um, partners is Safe Kids Worldwide, and um, they also have a great website. So we can you have, we have a link to Safe Kids Worldwide, and they have um, all kinds of fact sheets and tip sheets and um, things like that. They have a really great car seat guide that um, help you pick a car seat for your child. Um, so we link to them. We also have some great resources. Some um, seasonal resources on there, so um, summer safety type things. Um, when we have events coming up like car seat checks or um, other safety events that we might be involved with, those are on there as well, uh, along with some of our main topics such as water safety, mm-hmm. pedestrian safety. Yeah, you said a word that we were talking about earlier, summer safety. Uh, in our last few yeah. minutes here, you want to touch on that real quick and what we parents should really be watching for uh, over the summer? Yeah, so one of the main tips that I have for the summer, and it has to do a lot with the water, but um, when you lose your child, and I, I love to give this tip for any, any parent, if you have lost your child for, you know, whatever reason, um, go around your house, check any sources of water first, because that's what could mm-hmm. potentially kill them the fastest. So bathtub, toilets, sinks, um, if you have buckets of water or pool, definitely check all those areas very first. Um, and then if you don't find them around those areas, check in your car because uh, heat stroke is a, another uh, thing that we see with kids that get stuck in the car or they get left in the car. Um, and it can they escalate climb in themselves. really quickly. Yeah, they could climb themselves, yeah. shut the door and lock And can't get yeah. out. Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, so check the car because that can heat up, that can um, go quickly as well. And then start checking some of the area, other areas. So less, really yeah, triage your rescue or your finding plan yeah, so that you yeah. have a plan in place when you can't find your kid. I think that's a great point. Triage, like, which is setting highest priority first, mm-hmm. right? Right. Go to where the biggest accidents occur and then work your way down most from likely, there. Most likely, most know, Prioritize. Yeah. Um, I think oftentimes yeah. we get so busy, we, we run around and just are looking everywhere. More frantic. Yeah. Um, because we allow ourselves to get frantic. And I think that's where if we have a plan, mm-hmm. which we're all big Do some pre-planning. Planning, mm-hmm. Um, it's easier to stay focused and get things done. In the and right you'd order. be aware and el- eliminate those those issues. Like buckets of water, there's no reason uh, buckets of water should be sitting around in in your right. backyard, especially if you had kids. No reason whatsoever. What if you have a dog yep. and he's thirsty and that's how they drink? Give him a bowl. Don't give him a big bucket. 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What if you don't have kids just and the kids come over to visit with your brother because yep. he's got kids and they're your nieces and nephews, so you're not going to think you of that. you got to be sensitive to so that. So yeah, we've got to be aware of our surroundings. Um, Definitely. And as a parent, that's a, huge, that's a huge point is not only in your house do you need to be safe, but you need to be looking mm-hmm. for those sources of um, potential danger in other places that you go. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Give us your website one more time. We're almost out of time. SafeKidsUtah.org. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Are you guys listening? Uh, join us next week, Friday at 2 o'clock. We'll be right back uh, broadcasting right every week. Yeah, right back next week. Thanks again for listening, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day Thanks, here on Thanks, appreciate it.